uh, when to do and how to do uh, this thing. Uh, the first of all, I will start speaking about uh, indication of uh, reimplantation surgery. The main two indications is obstruction and reflux. In obstruction, the indication is child present with symptoms like abdominal pain, child with uh, febrile, recurrent febrile urinary tract infection, differential renal function less than 40% at presentation, or deterioration of uh, parameters on ultrasound and uh, on follow-up and significant decrease differential renal function by more than 5% in ritual isotope scan on routine uh, follow-up. Uh, the principles of uh, doing surgery in uh, obstructed mega ureter, as in surgery, we should excise the uh, stenotic segment, we should straighten the ureter, uh, we should uh, taper the ureter if hugely dilated, and also uh, we should uh, obey the rule of ratio 5 to 1 uh, as regard tunnel to diameter of the ureter ratio. As regard the xycoater reflux, the main indication is recurrent or breakthrough of a urinary tract infection or by nephritis while the child is uh, on antibiotic prophylaxis. Despite appropriate bladder and bowel habits, I mean there is no causes of secondary reflux. Surgical principles of xycoater reflux correction, the general principle excludes the causes of reflux, uh, secondary reflux, as I said. Gentle handling of the ureter to avoid injury, gentle handling of the bladder to avoid hematuria and the bladder spasm, adequate mobilization of the ureter to allow tension free and stomachs, establishing of liquid sense to the ampere ratio 5 to 1, and maintaining straight course of the reimplanted ureter, re ureter to avoid angulation or kink. We have many techniques of reimplantation. Is intravical, intravical. We can do it laparoscopic, robotic, or open. Uh, the meters may be infrahiatal or new meters. I mean, uh, infrahiatal or uh, suprahiatal. In babies over one year of old, the standard uh, treatment is doing uterine re reimplantation below than one year of age. It is um, some surgeons prefer, prefer to do. Uh, just diversion or minimally invasive procedures till the uh, uh, one year of age, like double G stent, balloon dilatation, injury protomy, venous reflux, or reflux in the ureteral reimplantation, especially in the uh, case of solitary ureter, or definitive ureteral reimplantation. We can do it from the, I, I, myself, I do it from the age of four uh, months or six months, and there is many literature that I will. Uh, Give one to uh, this literature uh, here in the presentation can do safely ureter uh, reimplantation below one year of age without uh, any short term or long term uh, affection on the blood. Techniques the most popular techniques is transvesical, Cohen, polythenol bitter, Glenn Anderson, or extra vesical bar or modified discrete bar, and mega ureters we can use uh, tapering or uh, cold. What is the better? I think no, uh, no technique or no thing technique is 100%. Uh, for example, blind extra physical passage of ureter in bulletin with bitter carries some risk of obstruction by kinking and may injure the bowel or nerves. Glenn Anderson advancement is have a lower success rate in reflux. Bone reimplantation has a high success rate but has a difficult. Uh, Casterization or endoscopy later on uh, if there is a problem. Uh, Lish Grigor is a very simple uh, operation and can be done in an outpatient clinic, but bilateral cases may uh, cause void in children. Some challenges present in case of reimplantation in the long segment post traumatic stricture. There is a separate entity about obstructive mega ureter, primary obstructive mega ureter, or of zycoater reflux is post traumatic mainly after uh, doing uh, beam, uh, sorry, urethroscopy or any surgery in the pelvis. We can have uh, a long segment of the lower ureter fracture. Okay, so we uh, in this case perform urethroneal with or without source hitch or bladder flap or body flap. 
realize that the fibrotic or contracted bladder may be unsuitable for either implantation or flap procedure. Instead, we can do transuretary retrostomy, uh, trans interposing the appendix, phototransplantation, or we can do ureteroileostomy or cutaneous retrostomy. if is rarely indicated. Uh, now I will start to uh, explain some procedures in detail. I will start by uh, coin technique. Uh, the position of the coin technique patient is subine. Uh, a roll toil under uh, the back. Incision is finished. The incision success rate is very high. This is the incision of uh, the coin procedure. Okay, finished the incision. Longitudinal or transverse flap uh, of the rectus. Uh, I can, uh, uh, for myself, sometimes I do longitudinal flaps in the rectus. Sometimes I do transverse flap. The difference is when I will uh, undecided uh, to do uh, longitudinal flap, I should longitudinal incision in the rectus. Sorry, I should elevate the skin above the rectus and doing skin flap dissect the uh, subcutaneous fat from the rectus sheath towards the umbilical. And this will need uh, closure after, uh, at the end of the operation, we may have, uh, may need drain, suction drain, and the uh, chance of uh, for seroma formation is very high. Sometimes I do transverse incision of the rectus sheath uh, and do the flap of the rectus sheath uh, below the rectus sheath between the muscles and the rectus sheath and uh, with the advantage of uh, avoiding seroma or uh, second brain. Uh, then the anterior bladder wall is incised uh, to expose the trigone properly, uh, one or several goods or dressing, small base of dressing, both inside the bladder and retracted upward towards the room of the bladder with a deeper retractor, retractor held by the assistant and the apex of the uh, bladder incision, the lower part of the incision, we can uh, make a suture at this angle to prevent uh, disruption uh, of the incision towards the bladder neck and urethra. Sometimes I suture this angle to uh, the lower angle of the rectus sheath in the midline. We should avoid Dennis Brown retractor because it, uh, it is vigorous, may cause damage to the bladder, access uh, to the lateral basicular space is difficult, and the bladder will lose its mobility and stability. Uh, as we see here, there is the, a knot of uh, vicral suture here at the apex of uh, lower part of the uh, bladder incision to prevent disruption of uh, this uh, part and this incision towards the bladder neck. Sometimes I take the suture from here, the rectus sheath here above, here above the central pubis, and fix it to the bladder neck again and uh, tie it over the rectus sheath to prevent uh, the disruption of the bladder. I can uh, the uh, ureters by four French uh, catheter, uh, and the C suture is placed around the each ureteric orifice at a fixed point. I mean a fixed point you should uh, choose a, a fixed point, either inferior medial, inferior medial, uh, to help you in orientation after urethral dissection uh, to minimize uh, or to prevent torsion of the urethra. I will start by circumcising the urethral orifice by very low current uh, coagulation or cutting by cerny, and start by scissor to dissect the uh, muscle fibers attaching the urethra to uh, the bladder. Uh, like here, I cut these fibers by uh, diacermy. Uh, really, I um, use now uh, just the bipolar diacermy in this situation by Addison Gift and bipolar diacermy, and they cut these muscle fibers and just uh, boiling uh, the peritoneum away from the urethral wall by a uh, peanut uh, dissector and the ureter will be released. As I said, we push the adhesion to put him away with a venous dissector. Be careful to preserve the vascular urethral adventitia because stripping of uh, this adventitia results in 
uh, ureter and ischemia, protrusions, and uh, stricture. This is the ureter uh, after its release. It's a very long segment of the ureter, and we can do reimplantation. This defect of the ureteral uh, normal ureteral hiatus is caused by interrupted the 5 0 vital suture. Uh, be careful, suture not narrowing uh, the hiatus, but still allow the free movement of the ureter and do not restrict uh, or constrict. The submucosal tunnel is formed by uh, horizontal tunneling crossing the midline of the sheer bladder wall just above the trachea. If the ureter is usually dilated, you should do uh, bladder fabric. This ureter is difficult to be uh, reimplanted properly with five to one ratio, so, so we should do fabric of this ureter. We have two main techniques. The first uh, technique is hindering excisional technique. We excise uh, the excessive ureter and we do we put about eight French catheter and excise the uh, rest of the ureter and suture it single or uh, two layers like here and usually we do uh, the, uh, the tunnel uh, more uh, sorry the uh, tapering more uh, than the length of the tunnel okay the second technique is uh, Kalsinski technique. It is a uh, folding or remodeling technique. Okay, but the problem of this technique is not suitable for usually dilated ureters. Uh, only suitable for the moderately dilated ureters is then 1.75 centimeters in diameter, uh, as too big diameter will result in bulky uh, model or remodeled ureters that is difficult to be reimplanted and can cause failure or structure. This uh, Reynolds uh, scissor, I use it uh, in reimplantation surgery. Always I use this scissor, it's blunt scissor. Uh, do uh, do uh, very low harm uh, to the tissues. And uh, I uh, use it for dissection of the ureteral, barriere tissue and uh, for uh, the tunnel uh, in the blood. Sharp scissors should be avoided to avoid injury to any structure. The tunnel should be wide enough to allow easy insertion of the ureter with no uh, constriction. Uh, if we do bilateral cohen, the lower part is so uh, somewhat difficult. The lower tunnel is difficult because uh, the mucosa is sometimes adherent to the trigon and is more bloody. Uh, here, we uh, clean the ureter and do the tunnel. This is a stay suture and with an instrument under the tunnel, we can bolt the ureter. The trick here is to avoid torsion or kinking of the ureter. We uh, fix the ureter at this point by non-traumatizing forceps to prevent its angulation or torsion and start to uh, bolt the ureter in the uh, tunnel. The tunnel, the ureter, the uh, distal uh, half centimeter in size, and we do a spatulation, and then we fix the ureter. Uh, dorsal suture here, or suture here, uh, not the apex of the spatulation. Spatulation is sutured by 6O vital sutures to the mucosa of the bladder, and here we fix the ureter uh, to the bladder uh, muscles uh, by 5O uh, uh, vital suture. Okay, this is bilateral uh, reimplantation of bilateral cooling was done. What is stent or not to put a stent? If you do unilateral or bilateral case, you will put a stent in all cases. It's debatable and no consensus about that. If you put a stent, you have to put either uh, infant feeding, feeding tube or double G stent or blue stent. Blue stent has two coils, one in the uh, uh, bladder uh, and the other the outside and we can remove it uh, once the kidney and the other in the bladder and it can be removed uh, externally without doing it. The feeding tube is put in position for about two days or 10 days if the ureter was remodeled. 
there is no consensus on the efficacy of drainage of the re-implanted ureter, and some authors don't leave any drainage. The bladder is drained by a caster for at least five days. Uh, my experience, I and my professor Bryson, uh, in cases of bilateral cohen, we uh, put a feeding tube in one ureter only, not both ureters. Uh, the rationale I will tell you after the match. The bladder is closed in two layers, and we put a drain and the caster and the patient is charged in the second post of it. The second operation is bulletinal lid bitter re-implantation. Uh, first, the same idea of uh, opening the bladder and describing the ureter here, like the last uh, our cohen and cohen re-implantation. We freeing the ureter from its attachments from the bivalvical uh, bivalvical prime uh, ureter. Sorry, bivalvical ureter uh, attachments here. Transvasical insertion of an overhaul close to the bladder, posterior bladder wall. We bought this instrument barrel to the posterior bladder wall and doing the incision about three centimeters from the above the uh, natural orifice here. And stay suture will be taken and I can get out and uh, fix this stay suture in the ureter and remove the stent. And then the ureter, this is the forceps I use. The ureter is again uh, put in this part retrovasically to be out of this incision. Okay. And then we close the uh, muscles of the uh, normal hiatus and the ureter is put in a tunnel from the new hiatus, sorry, here, to the uh, normal hiatus. And after closing the muscle bed of the uh, normal hiatus, the ureter is pulled to this hiatus. And it's fixed here. And the part of the tissue here is closed, and we can put stent or the extra vesical part or the blind part is not easy to teach and they require an experienced surgeon. However, foul injury can certainly be avoided using this small uh, Langenbeck retractor. Okay, to visualize the distal ureter and mobilize sometimes adherent peritoneum from the ureter. In this step, care must be taken not to injure the bowel, vase, or vagina. The inexperienced surgeon is therefore advised uh, to retract the superior lip of the original hiatus to sweep off the old structures uh, under direct pressure. The main indication is bilateral reflux here uh, can be done in unilateral reflux. It creates new orifice in an anatomically correct position which is easily accessible for endurological manipulation in opposite to foreign procedure. Glenn Anderson it is the same idea of glutinium lid bitter, but it is uh, avoid the blind part of this operation. Implantation is made under direct vision without blind extra vesical dissection. The ureter orbit is fixed as well. Uh, I will see, I will show you here. This is the uh, ureter, okay, and the part of the muscles. All whole bladder wall is excised laterally. So I will bring the ureter laterally to the lat to lateral position. And the muscle fibers here is re-sutured and the ureter is again in this time. It is the same idea of bitter, uh, but by direct vision, not blind. Here the ureter, I bring it to lateral position suturing this part and doing re-implantation again. About extra physical re-implantation, we can do it laparoscope or open. This is a laparoscopic dismembered disc reservoir in extracted ureter. This is a tapered ureter and anastomosis to the hiatus. There is the tunnel uh, made and the ureter is uh, 
put in the tunnel and the serosa, uh, sorry, the closer muscle is closed over the rectum. And open technique it is the same. Here, the tunnel and ureter is embedded in this tunnel here. We can see this trick. We uh, put an instrument beside the ureter while we closing the muscle layer of the closure over it to ensure that there is no obstruction on the ureter. This obstructed mega ureter after tapering, this is tapered ureter, this is our operations, and this is the uh, tunnel and bladder mucosa, and the ureter will be implanted here in the bladder mucosa. In case of double ureter, both ureters should be implanted in the same submucosal tunnel. A drain is placed in the proximate, uh, proximity of the anastomosis and is removed when the output is minimal. In case of dismembered uh, anastomosis, but if the ureter is still intact, we cannot put a drain and we can uh, also omit putting a urethral caster in uh, non toilet trained children. Children one year or less than one year when you do less required unilateral. Uh, if no mucosal injury at all of the bladder, we can uh, uh, finish the operation without putting uh, retrovesical uh, or paravesical drain or urethral caster. The fully caster can be used for five days if we did uh, dismembered and smoothies to improve our results. We avoid torsion, angulation, or kinking of the ureter, maximize the preservation of the blood supply, create adequate humidity of the bladder, and create tension free anastomosis. Sometimes, uh, Lich Grégoire done in inguinal incision. Inguinal incision, here, this is the incision, opening the inguinal canal and uh, dissecting. This is the ureter, this is the bladder, and tunnel. It's so narrow space and so difficult, and it's just done by a single surgeon in a single center. This is a published paper. Uh, I can uh, do, uh, we did some operations from uh, inguinal incision, but larger than this incision. Actually, it's difficult, uh, more difficult than the usual steel incision. This is a modified dish Grégoire. It is like the usual Lich Grégoire, but here we do incision of the uh, of the uris, uh, the detrusal traps below uh, distal to the ureteric uh, orifice, and here we put a suture from the base to the ureter, base of the ureter, and again like figure feet and figure, and close it to retract the ureter down, and the ureter uh, will be put in the tunnel and closed like that again. It is not different. Uh, greatly from the original uh, uh, digital. Some no, uh, techniques not usually uh, done, but the, okay, we can uh, do it in uh, selected cases or selected situations. Like the impregnable uh, re-implantation, the ureter, tied the bladder, spatulated and uh, nibbled here like that, and sutured to the bladder, especially in hugely dilated ureter without so as each and the body flap indicated when the degree of urethral loss, as we said, precludes uh, simple urethral urethrostomy or urethral neostostomy. Small volume bladder is contraindication to do this technique. So as each, the bladder is mobilized on one side, uh, the ipsilateral uh, urethral basology. The ipsilateral bladder boom is pulled on position and position over the ipsilateral psoas muscle above the bifurcation of the common iliac artery. The uh, transected proximal ureter segment, which has also been mobilized, is placed onto the superior lateral surface of the bladder dome to ensure ability to create tension-free retrovesical uh, uh, anastomosis. The extravesical bladder wall uh, surface is anchored to the psoas muscle with four to six uh, 2O vicryl sutured Blades through the psoas minor muscle tendon and the bladder bruiser muscle. Suture should be blazed superficially through the tendon of the psoas minor parallel to the direction of the muscle fibers 
so as to minimize the risk for disrupting the genital femoral nerve depleted superficial on the psoas muscle or the femoral nerve located deeply in the belly of the psoas muscle. Okay, this is the uh, psoas muscle and is anchored here, and this is the flap where the ureter in a tunnel and the flap is closed. The apex of the, uh, of the body flap should measure at least three centimeters in width. The length of the flap should approximate the size of the urethral defect. Although longer flaps, usually an additional six centimeters, may be used if urethral tunneling is planned for non refluxing anastomosis. It is critical that the ratio of length to base width does not exceed three to one, as this risks ischemia to the flap. Flap measurements should be taken with the bladder not distant. Most operative cases, uh, care of uh, uh, reimplantation of the child is usually hospitalized for one to five days. Actually, most of the cases of unilateral reimplantation can be discharged on the same day of surgery. And laser reward uh, can be done as outpatient surgery. And after three hours, patient can be discharged. The rhetoric stent is removed after two days. Uh, or five days, there's no consensus. Uh, 10 days if the ureter has been removed. The bladder catheter removed at five days. I leave it myself for seven days. Uh, drains are removed on the second day. Bladder spasms are common, and the oral oxybutynin can be useful to reduce this discomfort and can continue after uh, operation uh, for several weeks. The type of antibiotic prophylaxis uh, varies widely among surgical teams. Penis control is diclofenac subprojectors uh, above in patients above six years. Ibuprofen from six months to six years and less than six months of old, uh, we should do just paracetamol, no ibuprofen, no diclofenac. The child stay, uh, should stay away from school for at least two weeks after surgery and avoid uh, sport for one month. Ultrasound is usually advisable three months after surgery to ensure that there is uh, no increased dilatation of the upper tract, which can be related to ureteric obstruction at the level of reimplantation, or may not, may be uh, just due to edema and will resolve later. Post operative evaluation of ureteral reimplantation in the expert hands, the success rate for ureteral mesostostomy in patients with low grade primary zygote reflux approach 100%. So we uh, no need for doing invasive imaging post-operative. Only sonogram after six to 12 weeks post-operative. The success rate with uncomplicated retrostomy approached 100% according to many literature. On the basis of these reports, it has been suggested that post-operative avoiding cystosogram should be avoided in this group of patients. In patients with dysfunctional bladder voiding after surgery or increasing the hydronephrosis or recurrent urethral tract infection after surgery, we should do voiding cystoretrosis. If there is no one of these three, we just uh, do ultrasound for uh, this patient. Complication of urethral reimplantation, there is early complication. The first is persistent refluxes. Early reflux, reflux after urethral neosostostomy usually not a significant clinical problem and usually resolves by uh, one year on repeat cystography. Persistent reflux at one year uh, was more common in patients who had high grade reflux from the start. So the uh, persist, uh, persistent reflux is more with high grade reflux, no with low grade reflux. The majority of full grade reflux, most uh, operative reflux detected by the initial DCG at three months, follow up, going disappear spontaneously, likely because the resolution of the bladder inflammation, improvement of bladder dysfunction that may present in the early post operative bleed, may uh, cause uh, temporary reflux. Contralateral reflux. Uh, Contralateral reflux occurs about. Uh, in 8% case of unilateral uh, reimplantation, small percentage of patients undergoing unilateral uh, ureteral reimplantation have been known to develop post-operative contralateral reflux. Given that, 
bilateral implantation is mandatory. Uh, but it can be, uh, but there is a high resolution rate of such contralateral reflux, thereby contradicting the need for such aggressive mistakes. Some uh, authors recommend doing bilateral reimplantation even in case of unilateral reflux or unilateral obstruction for fear of uh, contralateral reflux occurring. Okay. Uh, but most of the cases of contralateral reflux uh, disappear. Obstruction. Obstruction is not unusual to detect mild to moderate degree of hydrophobic in the early post-operative period of ultrasound. This should resolve with continuous with time, especially with cases Lich Grégoire. Uh, those cases mostly have no hydrophobic preoperative. Post-operative, we can find hydrophobic up to one month of the operation and severe uh, spontaneous. Acute post-operative obstruction may be related to technical issues such as twisting or kinking of the ureter in the tunnel, intramural blood clot, or extramural compression by submucosal hematoma or edema at the site of an The diagnosis is already made, already made by ultrasound and severe hydroeterine flow is confirmed by delayed function and excretion on renal isotopic scan. In the more significant cases, drainage of the system either by retrograde insertion of a double big tail caster or percutaneous nephrostomy tube may be necessary. Many of these cases resolve without requiring any additional surgery. Long-term complications, obstruction or long-term obstruction, may, uh, mainly due to ischemia of the distal ureter, angulation, especially if the new hiatus is positioned too laterally or anteriorly on the bladder wall, underdeveloped submucosal tunnel, stenosis of the new urethral contour, may result spontaneously or management uh, options include balloon dilatation, stenting, or unroofing of the distal ureter by endoscope for new, milli new millimeter will preserve preservation of the rest of the tunnel to relieve uh, obstruction. If these interventions uh, fail, we should do re-implantation again. This is an article about uh, hydronephrosis following urethral reimplantation. When it is concerned, when is it concerning? This group of patients, a large number of patients, retrospectively analyzed about uh, more than uh, 900 patients underwent reimplantation surgery. Most of them, uh, I think, uh, seven patients only needing or need needed uh, redo surgery, and the rest of the more than 900 patients resolved hydrophobia either uh, stationary in course or resolved spontaneously. Uh, they uh, advise to do radioisotopic scan in case of progressive hydronephrosis, if there is obstruction decreasing the function or decreasing in cortical thickness of the blood uh, of the kidney, you should do uh, dilatation, blown dilatation or a frosting tube or uh, Reducing. If no, you should wait until two years. Most of the cases will, or most of cases will resolve spontaneously. Recurrent or persistent reflux. Failure of anti-reflux procedure in primary low-grade reflux is extremely. Low. Most failures are caused by either high high-grade reflux or inadequate ratio of the tunnel lens to urethral bed. Failure to recognize secondary reflux, especially associated with neurogenic bladder or voiding dysfunction, is a very common cause. This issue is need, uh, needs to be addressed and might before reimplantation again, because in most of situations, improving the bladder habits, storage function, and the emptying function with a combination of anticholinergic or CIC uh, can lead to a spontaneous resolution of secondary reflux and omitting the need for uh, reducer. Void in function, incomplete emptying can occur post operative especially after bilateral extravesical uh, reimplantation. Just dissecting grievesically can influence bladder function, but expect to return to normal. Injury to the pelvic plexus, particularly if bilateral, may lead to bilateral hydrophobic and renal insufficiency. To prevent nerve injury, free the distal ureter close to the urethral adventitia and avoid the section outside the mesoureter, especially dorsally, and towards the trigone to prevent 
the terminal branch of the uh, preserve the terminal branch of the principle. In the paper uh, showing the bilateral extravesical uterine reimplantation in toilet ring children, short stay procedure without urinary retention. Okay. And there is a paper lower urinary tract dysfunction in children after intravesical, not extravesical, urinary reimplantation uh, surgery under one year of age. Yes, under year of age, no voiding dysfunction uh, at follow up. Voiding function is very rare, and most of the papers uh, talking about voiding function occurred after bilateral uh, uh, extravesical or Lich Grégoire uh, is temporal, and some cases needing uh, CIC and uh, medication. Fistula is very rare, but failure to correct uh, the uh, fistula is rarely caused by erythrovesical fistula. Uh, I mean failure or redo reflux or reflux again is may be due to fistula in the urethral space especially when we do tailoring of the urethra. The most dangerous is vasico vaginal fistula. It can be overlooked in girls although it is rare occurrence. We, uh, yeah, I have seen it once in my life. Reoperative reimplantation. Is it challenging? Careful dissection the section of the ureter is being accomplished by a combination of extravesical uh, and intravesical mobilization together. The ureter should be carefully evaluated and the ischemic segment should be excised. Free bleeding surface is good to ensure that there is a, a preserved blood supply. It is prefer uh, preferable to create a new hiatus and submucosal tunnel. If the ureter is short, cross hitch can be used to facilitate the creation of anti-flux mechanism. We should first look to blood function again if dysfunction, uh, if it's no uh, bladder dysfunction, uh, we can do reimplantation. If there is dysfunction, we should uh, manage it first. Mostly, the bulletin with beta or Cohen technique can be used. Source hitch can be achieved only in one side. Attaining source hitch on both sides will not provide adequate dense on either side and thus should be avoided. If both ureters are shortened, consider a source heat on one side to achieve a satisfactory anti-reflux mechanism with transuretary reprostomy for the other ureter. Other techniques to consider for uh, the shorter ureter include worry flat, short ureter, nipple valve can be created and associated with short submucosal tunnel. The nipple valve is particularly useful in the dilated ureter as we said, uh, in situation in which the ureter is significantly foreshortened, it can be replayed using a segment or bound. Uh, there is a paper, Journal of Pediatric Urology, uh, 2017, uh, talking about intravesical ureteric implantation for primary obstructed mega ureter in infant under one year of age. And the conclusion is ureteric implantation infant under one year of age is safe and effective uh, option for managing uh, primary obstructive mega ureter. They did uh, 35 cases uh, and there is no failure rate. So we can do safely uh, to do one year. Uh, there is a waiver transvasicoscopic uh, or pneumovasicoscopic cohen ureteric reimplantation for vasicoureter reflux in children, single uh, five years experience, and this is showing. Uh, comparable result to open techniques. Uh, uh, I will show you uh, some uh, tricky videos, short, very short videos. Um, video Zahir kida or not Zahir? Ah, Zahir, ya Walid. Video not Zahir kida? Zahir, ya Walid. I في فيديو ثاني ده كلها very short videos. There is a tapering of the ureter. Just I want to told you that I do tapering the ureter, but not cutting the ureter or the whole wall of the ureter. This is Alice and this is the catheter. I just release the adventitia over over the ureter, release it. 
uh, and the cutting the uh, ureteric wall and then cover uh, the adventitia again. Again, yes, I just dissect the adventitia over the ureteric wall from both sides and cut the uh, ureteric wall and then uh, suturing this adventitia uh, again. Uh, thank you uh, very much. Uh, thank, you, Sam, thank you, uh, all participants. I hope uh, the uh, lecture uh, uh, beneficial for you and not losing uh, your time. Thank you. كل سنة وحضراتكم طيبين جميعا بمناسبة رمضان. ثانيا احنا بنشكر الدكتور عيد جدا 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 على المحاضرة الهائلة اللي غطت كل الموضوع بتاع الري امبلانتيشن شكلين يا دكتور عيد في اسئلة كتيرة جدا يا دكتور وليد. معلش انا جمعتهم بقى كلهم دلوقتي موجودين قدامي وهنبدا الدسكشن بتاعتهم سؤال سؤال حتى جاوب انت بقى دكتور عيسى لا انت اللي حاجات انا متعلمها ان احنا حضرتك انت اللي هتجاوب بقى دكتور وليد بص يا دكتور وليد بدايه اول سؤال من دكتور احمد فهمي من اسكندريه دكتور احمد فهمي از اسكينج اف وي ار دوينج روتين سيستوسكوبي براير تو ري امبلانتيشن سيرجري اور نوت And if yes. we are doing cystoscopy, what is the indication and for what gender and for what reason? Yes, I do cystoscopy for many of the cases. Not most of the cases, but many of the cases I do uh, cystoscopy. Sometimes, Dr. Heitzam, there is a hidden uh, duplication. You sometimes contract it when you're doing uh, the implantation by seeing double urethra. Uh, or any bladder pathology or the uh, bladder uh, diverticuli, bladder terabiculations. Okay, uh, so uh, before uh, doing cystoscopy, uh, sorry, uh, reimplantation, we should do cystoscopy for such cases. Okay, so, so Dr. Wade, the answer is you are doing cystoscopy prior to any reimplantation on table before opening the patient. Yes. Okay. السؤال الثاني يا دكتور وليد uh, concerning the reimplantation before one year of age um, uh, is it starting from six months of age or whatever age the problem دكتور عيسام is the bladder uh, volume okay I think we can do uh, reimplantation if the bladder volume uh, is more than uh, 40 uh, cc or 5 or 50 cc is is not uh, written in the literature but is uh, an, uh, an observation so i can do it from the age of four months i did reimplantation in age four months uh, in this case uh, the bladder is uh, have adequate capacity and, and the patient or child is uh, have a solitary kidney with obstructed megaureter increasing uh, deterioration of the renal function. And I prefer to do definitive surgery uh, uh, because I don't like to do uh, diversion in solitary kidney. Uh, so after separation and there's uh, no problems happened, I frequently do reimplantation from four months of age. There's no problem uh, at all. Dr. Walid, you are uh, an expert in doing reimplantation, but uh, <laughs> we are speaking with, uh, with friends and colleagues yes. uh, like me who are not like you in, in the expertise of doing the, the reimplantation. So when you, uh, when you are saying that for a solitary kidney, you are doing reimplantation at the age of four months, um, I'm afraid that this might uh, uh, be a, a very strong message Uh, to whom who are not so experienced in doing the reimplantation. Yeah. In the study of Dr. Walid, now, um, um, if you have someone who is not so expert in doing reimplantation at that age, in this situation, do you suggest, for example, doing a terminal urethrostomy or. Refluxing anastomosis, oh, yes. Or, or refluxing anastomosis or internal diversion in the form of a yes, double J yes. temporary yes, yes. until the child is much older and then we can do re implantation. The standard think? of Rysam is uh, above one year. Okay, this is an exception and the, the literature is still poor in this point. 
Okay, uh, uh, so there is another question concerning the reimplantation before one year of age, Dr. Walid. Um, if, if the reimplantation is bilateral, if the condition is bilateral, like bilateral obstructed mega ureter, can you do the bilateral reimplantation before the age of one year uh, without anticipating the problems from no. the size of the bladder? No, I don't do bilateral reimplantation before that age. Bilateral implantation, I, the, the, the lowest age was uh, 10 months. Because the bladder capacity, as I said. Okay, for, so for the safety of uh, the child, you are recommending if it is bilateral, huge ureter, going to do uh, excisional tearing, for example, you, you postpone uh, the re-implantation until an age of one year, around one yes. year. Yes. Um, there is another question, when to suspect the presence of bladder dysfunction together with uh, the psychoeuteric reflux before doing the re-implantation? Okay. Uh, it is uh, easy to know uh, in toilet trained children. We ask about uh, avoiding habits, avoiding diary, uh, and the bladder uh, picture in the VCG, trapeculated or not, the most avoiding residual in young children, the shape of the urethra, external sphincter, narrowing. Okay, uh, the problem is in children uh, uh, not toilet trained, it's difficult. So the children, uh, sorry, children uh, 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 not toilet trained, uh, I do cystoscopy for that reason to show uh, bladder trabeculations or divertically or whatever. In children, uh, more than uh, our toilet trained, uh, symptoms and uh, picture of the cystograms and uh, uh, is, uh, can tell us if they were avoiding function or not. Again, uh, okay, again, Dr. Ahmad Hanno. Uh, is asking about the cases with bilateral vasoconstrictive reflux and the severe voiding dysfunction and the recurrent pyelonephritis in spite of medical treatment for uh, the bladder dysfunction and the recurrent pyelonephritis. Uh, what you do? Uh, he is saying, knowing that reimplantation in such a scenario might be difficult, hazardous, and associated with a low success rate. Although Walid meta-analysis in the literature proved that voiding dysfunction is not a contraindication for open uh, re-implantation. What is your experience? Uh, uh, voiding dysfunction is contraindication to do re-implantation. In such cases, it's better to do augmentation or CIC or Botox injection or uh, something else. But re-implantation will recur again and we have Cases uh, we have done uh, reimplantation in the presence of voiding dysfunction is in spite of controlling the condition by medications and reflux is uh, recurring again and the patient is not improving. So, in case of voiding dysfunction and uh, uh, recurrent red tract infection and the fever, uh, uh, we consider more aggressive treatment for voiding dysfunction like Botox injection or augmentation. Uh, we are speaking about, Dr. Walid, the primary reflux, uh, not to give uh, 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 a false information reflux, for, uh, for audience. A primary reflux to, which is associated uh, with uh, some sort of bladder dysfunction difficult to treat. Uh, are you doing augmentation in such cases? I doubt. You are, you are it, not doing uh, this augmentation. This case means primary reflux? Primary reflux, but with severe voiding dysfunction. Uh, reflux is secondary to the avoidance function or not? No, it's not second to the avoidance function. They are associated together, but it is a case of primary vasoconstrictive reflux. Uh, you can uh, know uh, how how to know this is not primary reflux or not. Or secondary to the avoidance function. You should do urodynamic, okay? Urodynamic here is fallacious. If, it's, uh, if it gives you, if, if, if it gives you high pressure bladder, it, it will not be fallacious. But it, if it gives yes. you a low pressure bladder, it might be due to the presence of uh, reflux. Yes. So you In will start with. You, so you will start with 
Um, anticholinergics, you will start with uh, 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 urotherapy. I, I have some cases like that, Dr. Heisen, and resolve the, the reflux resolved by managing uh, the, uh, the functional voiding. Okay. okay. Okay, so you will concentrate. You will concentrate on the voiding dysfunction. Voiding function. Yeah, I can't re reimplant it in presence of voiding dysfunction. Okay, Doctor Walid, another question: Do you perform uh, bilateral leash Grégoire reimplantation? You oh. personally, do you perform bilateral leash Grégoire reimplantation? Never. Never. Uh, however, in the presentation. Uh, you presented yes. articles saying that the instance of voiding dysfunction is low and the temporary. One case is enough to uh, omit this procedure, the price. It's a nightmare. We so have I'm cases, and you said cases of uh, retention and voiding dysfunction after bilateral issue uh, We We together see cases, so cases done by other surgeons. And the patient is in still in CIC and no improving in spite of literature. So one case of voiding dysfunction or retention after this reward is a nightmare and can uh, and, uh, give, yeah, make me uh, omitting this uh, technique at all. So you are using leash Grégoire only unilateral? On unilateral cases. Unilateral cases. Yes. Uh, Dr. Walid, another question, what you do for uh, bilateral mega ureter, obstructive mega ureter, as a kind of reimplantation. Uh, do you do Cohen reimplantation? Do you do Leach Grigoire reimplantation? Do you do polytanolid vector reimplantation? What type of reimplantation you prefer? And why? I do. Why do Cohen reimplantation? Mm -hmm. Cohen reimplantation is, uh, in my hands, it gives me better results. I can deal with the ureters. Uh, I don't like blind surgery. The blind, the blind part of polytan with bitter, uh, not make me, uh, or making me not like this operation. It's a personal okay. preference, not uh, not based on any scientific base. I Dr. do Walid, tabering, uh, bilateral tapering and uh, bilateral. Okay. How how you decide, Doctor Walid, on doing tapering or not? Uh, Try some according to the uh, back in the law of uh, five to one tunnel to the diameter of the ureter. Okay, if my tunnel it will uh, adapt the ureter in this ratio, I will not do uh, uh, tailoring. Okay, okay, I mean, if the ureter is one centimeter and my tunnel is five centimeters, I will not do it, but my tunnel is three centimeters. And the ureter is one centimeter. I will should do it. Okay, it so, uh, uh, so you do tailoring to achieve at least a three to one or five to one. Five to one. Five to one. Five to one. Yes. Okay. Uh, when you use a stent or not, Doctor Walid, after reimplantation. According to this type of reimplantation, in dismembered reimplantation, usually I use double G stent. Uh, and what do you mean by dismembered reimplantation, Doctor? I Walid? think an obstructed mega ureter and will anastomose. Uh, the ureter to the bladder by leash Grigoire technique. Okay. Uh, in case of uh, leash Grigoire, the, the usual leak leash Grigoire, no stent at all. In Cohen, as I said, in bilateral cases, I stent one ureter. Okay. Just one ureter. Uh, in unilateral cases, I don't uh, put a stent. Dr. Ali, tailoring, uh, uh, with tailoring, you stent routinely? I stent routinely with tailoring. With tailoring. Yes. Hmm. yes. Uh, Dr. Walid, another question. If there is any case after uh, urethrostomy, uh, what type of reimplantation do you prefer? If you uh, if previously done urethrostomy for obstructed mega ureter, like a terminal urethrostomy, what type of reimplantation at that time you prefer? Uh, it is a terminal urethrostomy. I will do Leach Grégoire reimplantation. Okay. okay. Unilateral. Sometimes I do urethrostomy, low urethrostomy for bilateral pathologies. Okay. In this situation, I do glutenol with bitter or cone uh, reimplantation. 
Uh, another question, what are the causes of recurrent reflux after reimplantation? You, you have said this, that in the presentation, but you can emphasize upon it. Grid reflux, yes. Uh, again, what are the causes? High grid reflux or the most common cause is voiding its function. Uh -huh. Or uh, the third cause is the short time, a very short time. Yeah. Another question that we when to suspect obstruction following reimplantation. Okay. As I said, in the hydro process after reimplantation is a very common phenomenon. Okay. I uh, think about obstruction if this uh, hydrophrosis is increasing, affecting parenchymal sickness, uh, uh, symptom symptomatic, or uh, presence of urine tract infection. Okay, but uh, at least three months after the operation. After that, if there is uh, increasing hydrophrosis or symptoms or, if, uh, or infection, I will do the patient uh, BTBA uh, renograph. If there is obstruction, I will go to uh, double G stent or balloon dilatation. Uh, uh, Dr. Ahmed Shuman, he was asking about the caliber of the catheter uh, during excisional tailoring of the ureter. He's saying that eight French is uh, too small and not sufficient uh, uh, for doing the excisional ta tailoring. Uh, uh, apparently, he prefers at least uh, a 10 French, not an 8 French. Yes. There's no, no consensus to try some uh, regarding the size of the catheter going on it at tapering. Some uh, uh, authors uh, do it on 6 French, some on 8 French. Personally, I do it on, like Dr. Ahmed, on 10 French caster, but there is no uh, or solid data in the literature or a fixed uh, size in the literature to do on it times 6 French or 8 French or 10 French. Uh, if you have a redo reimplantation unilateral, Dr. Walid, after previous reimplantation, uh, which technique you adopt? According to the, size, uh, the length of the ureter. If the ureter length is good, I will do Lech Grégoire. Uh, if the ureter length is uh, uh, short, I will do Swiss Hitch and either Bulletin or Bitter or Bore Flat. Okay. Uh, another question What are the causes of obstruction following Cohen reimplantation? The most common cause is kinking or torture of the ureter. It is mostly technical uh, cause. Uh, sometimes, uh, as I said, the meatus is uh, uh, narrow, especially if you don't excise uh, the terminal part of the hypoplastic ureter in case of obstruction uh, or even reflux. If you uh, leave this part, it will uh, lead to obstruction. So uh, the meatus may be uh, uh, obstructed due to hypoplastic distal part of the ureter, or there is a torsion or a kink uh, in the ureter, uh, in the ureter, or ischemia. Mm. Uh, Dr. Walid, um, the area at the hiatus uh, during the Cohen reimplantation, sometimes the ureter, especially if refluxing and hugely dilated, is very thin and its tone is very weak. Uh, at the hiatus, it can, uh, it can become obstructed. What do you think? I don't understand your question. Uh, if you are doing coin reimplantation for uh, a mm -hmm. high grade reflux and the ureter wall is yes. very thin and of no good mm -hmm. tone, uh, sometimes if you do the yes. angulation at the hiatus, it might be uh, obstructed. What do you think? Yes. Yes, uh, uh, obstruction, not because of the angulation uh, only, because of the, this flabby ureter. And uh, uh, some articles uh, talk about that 
the degree of hydronephrosis preoperatively is uh, comparable to the degree of uh, postoperative hydronephrosis. So these flabby ureters is usually associated with high degree of hydronephrosis, and again, will uh, hydronephrosis will recur again. Angulation will do obstruction, but if, if there is no angulation, it will uh, this patient will have a massive hydronephrosis and will uh, take a very long time to resolve. Dr. Ali, Dr. Ehab Rafat uh, is asking about the source hatchery implantation. Uh, of course, in adults, uh, for doing the source hatchery implantation comfortably, you control and ligate the contralateral superior vesical vessels. Do we need yes. that excessive dissection in the contralateral side in children and the control of the contralateral superior vesical vessels in children? No, no. The, the bladder in children is more pliable than in adults. I have no experience in adults at all in doing such type of uh, reimplantation, but in children, uh, I think that uh, I didn't uh, cut the severe vesical artery any, any time uh, to uh, mobilize the bladder or uh, give us more mobilization. Uh, I share the same experience with you. If I, uh, I'm doing it laparoscopically even, the laparoscopic yes. uh, reimplantation of source H, and I never uh, did excessive dissection on the contralateral side to control the cerebrovascular vessels. Yes. So, Walid, you mentioned the nibble reimplantation in your presentation, and there is a question yes. concerning the nibble. What is the role of the nibble reimplantation, if any? Yes. Uh, nibble reimplantation is not uh, routinely used as a type of repair of obstructive megaureter or uh, reflex. But we can use it as a salvage technique in, in case of short ureter. And we have uh, not uh, the, uh, the option to do long tunnel. The uh, uh, nibble may be suitable for such cases. And also in cases of reimplantation in a pouch, uh, in augmented bladder, it is very suitable in these uh, situations, especially in very hugely dilated ureter. And we will not, uh, will to do, uh, will not uh, to do uh, uh, tailoring. We want to not to do the tailoring, yes. But usually I do ureter without tailoring, maybe is a good option. Dr. Walid, uh, another question, I, I think from Dr. Salah Nagla from Tanta. Uh, we understood from your presentation that follow-up is being done routinely by ultrasound in the first few months. This is a cornerstone in the follow-up, doing ultrasound. Uh, but the question is, uh, VCUG is also uh, being performed routinely or it is reserved for certain indications? I think I told uh, you in the presentation that ultrasound is uh, enough. VCUG is done only if there is a recurrent rate tract infection increasing the hydrocarbon or current of voiding dysfunction in just three situations. So you are not doing voiding cystoyosogram routinely following uh, leash Grigoire or Cohen reimplantation unless there is no or any uh, type of UTI, unless there is repeated UTI or increase in the hydronephrosis. No, I I don't do this G on any time or any type of uh, reimplantation unless there is indications. Uh, Dr. Walid, uh, there is a question from Dr. Uh, Salem Khalil from uh, Zagazig. If you have neurogenic bladder, he is uh, speaking about secondary reflux. Uh, coming with neurogenic bladder, yes. and you decided to do augmentation cystoplasty. When you decide to re-implant or not to re-implant the refluxing ureters together with augmentation cystoplasty. Yes, I think it is a low, if it is a, a low pressure reflux, you should re-implant it. If it is a high pressure reflux, just lowering the pressure will prevent this reflux yeah, according to the aerodynamic studies, according to high pressure bladder or not. Yeah, there, was, there, was, an article, yeah, there was an article yes. published by Turkish group uh, for that uh, answer. If it is a low pressure reflux during video urodynamics, 
So augmentation will not result in improvement of this reflux. So you have to re-implant it. But if it is a high pressure reflux, augmentation will dampen and decrease the pressure. So reflux will resolve. So you don't need to do re-implantation. Thank you, Dr. Walid. Another question. Uh, what is your experience for the role of deflux in residual reflux after re-implantation? Uh, residual reflux or after re-implantation, it may be asymptomatic or symptomatic. Yes. If it's asymptomatic, there's no problem at all. Okay. Sometimes, uh, or most of the times, it is low-grade reflux and causing no problems. If it is symptomatic, a deflux will not uh, resolve this problem because the tissues here is not uh, normal tissue. It's fibrosis and sutures and uh, 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 managing by the flux is not suitable for such kids. It's not mentioned at all in secondary post-operative uh, uh, failure. Okay, uh, Dr. Walid, there is another question uh, here from Dr. Ihsan uh, about the uh, use of uh, deflux. Uh, uh, Dixel injection, what is the result of Dixel injection in uh, vasicoteric reflux? Uh, the yeah, title of the lecture is about reimplantation. I think. We are focusing on reimplantation for that yes. reason. We didn't speak about the deflux and the, the Dixel. But the, you can answer, Dr. Reed, if you want. Uh, we have no experience with Dexil, Dr. Isam. We have uh, experience with deflux only. Okay. So consider the question deflux. <laughs> On deflux, yes. It is, it is uh, uh, okay and low grade reflux. Grade one, two, three reflux is very good uh, in such cases. But in high grades, the success rate is uh, lower than surgery. So you uh, answer surgery. the two and questions I, uh, uh, now. You answer the two questions yeah. at the same time because there was another question asking about the uh, role of deflux injection and the, in which grade and um, a role of in high grade. So in high grade, the success rate is 50% uh, uh, success yes. rate in grade four and the 25% or, okay. uh, uh, or something in grade deflux. five. Okay. Uh, Dr. Eid, there is another question asking about the balloon, endoscopic balloon dilatation in obstructed mega ureter uh, uh, as a primary treatment. The, the balloon dilatation as a primary treatment for obstructed mega ureter. What do you think and what is your experience? Uh, I think it's not suitable for all cases, Dr. Isom. Okay. Uh, some literature from Spain, from France, uh, talking about more than 80% success rate for uh, these cases. But I think it can be suitable or in very small children, less than six uh, months of age, and uh, with uh, moderate degree of hydrophobic, severe hydrophobic. Sometimes the structure segment is more than two centimeters and it's very tight, and success rate is uh, uh, very low. So, uh, and you cannot know uh, this patient will uh, get benefit from such technique or not. So I use it only in patients in less than six months uh, with progressive hydronephrosis as postponing, as a trial for postponing is a definite free implantation. If it is good, okay. It, uh, it is good uh, in two cases, just two cases with me. Uh, most of the cases, no response to balloon dilatation. Although, Dr. Walid, there is a growing experience, uh, especially European experience from Spain and from France, using the primary balloon dilatation as a primary treatment for obstructive mega ureter. But your experience is not with the balloon dilatation. Yes. Dr. Walid, there is a question from Dr. Mahmoud Chaban. He's asking um, if you uh, presented with a child with bilateral vasicoteric reflux, having previously recurrent pyonephritis, age is uh, two years, and he is having one kidney functioning by DMSA scan uh, 5%, and the other kidney is 95%, and he is having uh, a bilateral grade four vasicoteric reflux. Do you operate on the side uh, with a good function only? Do you uh, do nephrectomy at the side with 5% uh, function and re-implant to the other side? 
or do you perform a bilateral implantation uh, anyhow for both sides? Uh, in this patient, uh, primary and one kidney is lost and the other is uh, functioning well, uh, but uh, having bilateral flux. Uh, I do nephrial retrectomy in the non-function side, and I do extra physical implantation of the of the normal or the normally function side. So you will do the retrectomy for the non-function kidney and the extra yes. vesicular implantation for the other implantation side. Implantation for the norm uh, the normally function kidney. Okay, uh, uh, Doctor Ahmed Derwi is asking you, Doctor Walid. He's uh, giving a comment and a question. Uh, most of non-refluxing mega ureters resolve spontaneously. We should avoid undue operations, especially in infants. Uh, less than 40% uh, is not an indication for ureter reimplantation. Also, this rule works only for pyeloplasty. What do you think? Uh, Rahmat uh, uh, thinks that the less than 40 percent is not an indication uh, for doing intervention for such cases uh, to which level to 35 or 30 or 20. Uh, i uh, i will tell you the price and that obstructed kidneys even it's if it is uh, not severe and moderately the kidney will be affected especially if the uh, degree of uh, loss of function is high and sometimes uh, the kidneys with uh, long-standing obstruction after releasing uh, obstruction, leaving the, uh, relieving the obstructions, the patient will suffer from uh, tubular injury and uh, diabetes insipidence and leading to uh, dilatation again. So uh, I don't like to uh, leave uh, affected patients with obstruction for a long time uh, 40 uh, percent uh, decrease in the renal uh, renogram. It is present in the pelvic junction obstruction, but it means that this obstruction is uh, harmful for the kidneys. Whatever the level, if, if the level in the middle of the ureter, what it means, if it's different from the upper or the lower of the ureter, I think is less than 40. It is the kidney is uh, affected and should be uh, corrected. Dr. Walid, uh, can I add something for that? Uh, yes. For the obstructed mega ureter, the BABU guidelines or British Association of Pediatric Urology guidelines for obstructed mega ureter consider function less than 40% as an indication for doing something or for doing In, an any sort of obstruction, uh, yes. even upper, lower, or mid. Yes. yes. The problem of your presentation, we are covering two scopes. We are covering reimplantation for reflux. And we are and covering reimplantation for obstructed big ureter. So uh, I hope we don't mix between, uh, between both pathologies. Uh, Dr. Walid, you have another question uh, directed from uh, Dr. Ahmed Fahmi from Alexandria. And uh, <laughs> he's asking you, Dr. Walid, about reimplantation in a child with posterior cell valve. Any technical tips? Uh, and I, I know, and he knows that we are not doing <laughs> reimplantation for children with yes. posterior cell valve. Yes. Uh, do you agree or not? Yes, it is forbidden to do reimplantation in a patient for, uh, with posterior cell valve. But the right uh, we sometimes are confronted with patients uh, that already have surgeries outside, and they are uh, valve bladder or they have posterior cell valve, and the implanted ureters were obstructed. Okay, yes. we face this okay. situation. Yes. Okay, yes. in such cases, what will you do? What will you do? I ask you, the price. you are, you are the <laughs> in, in such cases, I, I I did double for the bladder. Bladder bladder capacity was enough, uh, huge enough. I did double for this uh, patient nibbling technique, and the patient is going gold. The blood, if the bladder is small, uh, you should do augmentation and uh, re-implant the ureter in the pouch. So, Dr. Walid, for the audience, as a message, yes. we are not doing re-implantation for uh, fluxing the ureters in cases of posterior valve ureter valve. 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 We are not doing re-implantation. Yes. We are focusing yes. on the bladder dynamics. 
We are focusing on the bladder pressure and the bladder evacuation. We are yes, not the, doing reimplantation. The, the problem is in the bladder wall, not in the arterial orifice. Yes, and this reflux is usually is secondary to the problem in the blood. In the blood, yes. Okay. Uh, you have another question from uh, from Dr. Ahmad Fahmi again. Yes. Uh, Reimplantation of a ureter in solitary kidney. Would you do any extra steps or uh, safety measures? I think this is a nice question. No, 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 uh, anything. But, uh, but uh, he's speaking I, of. He is speaking, of course, about stenting, a double J yes, stent or yes, something. I will, I will, yes, yes, yes. Uh, mostly I will put a stent if I do intravesical reimplantation. If uh, Lish Gregoire, I will not put a stent. Yes, and, but the patient should be closed, uh, closely uh, observed. Dr. Salah Nagla, in the end, after all the questions, I'll give you the chance to comment on the comment on the high-grade reflux uh, with deflux injection. Dr. Salim Khalil, is there a special technical issues on previously injected ureter when you decide to do a reimplantation? انت طبعا عارف دكتور وليد بتبقى البولس بتاعه الماتيريال موجوده في التيرمينال ureter. Dr. Salim is asking what yes, to do. Yes, yes no, no, nothing. It is uh, like a caseous material and uh, no problem at all the same uh, technique and same tricks. The flux is not harmful like macroplastic or, so, or anything doing a vigorous inflammatory response. So there is no problem at all when doing reimplantation after the flux injection. Yes, so, so with the flux, uh, we find the bolus, we open it, and we evacuate the material, and yes. we do the reimplantation. But the, the problem is with ventris and with macroplastic. You should there excise is, the ureter above the level. Uh, you will excise the inflammation part of the yes, ureter due to inflammatory sort of uh, reaction. Uh, you have a question from Dr. Abdel Munaim uh, Shams uh, concerning the vasicoscopic reimplantation for uh, vasicoteric reflux, the transvasical laparoscopic reimplantation. I have no experience from this uh, technique. But you have said in the presentation that it achieves a, a comparable success rate with the open yes. reimplantation, with no extra benefit than the open Cohen reimplantation. Oh. Uh, Dr. Walid, you have a question for um, epsilateral vasicoreteric reflux and the Hutch diverticulum. What you do? Uh, diverticulum with the reflux. Uh, Hutch yeah. diverticulum with yes. the vasicoreteric reflux. What you do? Yes, uh, I will do Lich Gregoire away from the diverticulum. If the, if the diverticulum is in my way of reimplantation, I will excise it. And repair the bladder and do Lich Gregoire. So uh, this diverticulum is a parietal diverticulum, usually in your uh, in your way. So you will excise it and you do reimplantation. Yes, reimplantation as usual. Okay. Another question concerning the secondary reflux after your seal insertion to the upper moiety. Yes. I think this is uh, outside the scope a little bit and a more complicated question to answer but uh, you can well, simply do if the lower uh, moiety ureter is normal i will do it with just uh, okay yeah. or upper partial nephrectomy for okay. those who are doing upper partial nephrectomy Whatever. if it is symptomatic of course if it is not symptomatic uh, no, no, nothing will be up, done full, full uh the, the same uh, the same person asks you what do you think about injection in that refluxing ureter in, uh, in the upper moiety of a ureter C? I think the failure rate is very high. The failure rate is very high. Okay. Another question, uh, which needs a very good answer to. Uh, he is asking you, uh, I, don't, uh, I don't see the name well because it's coming from the iPhone. For complex anorectal malformation, Usually, uh, there are uh, renal and urinary tract abnormalities, including the presence of vasicoreteric reflux. Uh, he's asking you about when to do the reimplantation, when to decide doing something for that uh, reflux, and what type of reimplantation to be uh, performed, and what are the precautions you have to take before doing reimplantation in such cases. Uh, are you going to do cystoscopy? Are you going to do urodynamics for the bladder? Are you going to measure the post-void residual or not? He is asking about these things. 
Yes. Uh, as regard to cases with uh, previous in rectal malformation surgeries, uh, I have many cases like that. And uh, I never touched anyone few because they are doing well without surgery. But if the patient uh, have an indication for surgeries such as recurrent fibrillary tract infection or deterioration of the renal function, we should consider surgery. But this situation with previous pelvic surgeries, I think the section is so difficult. So uh, we should first do urodynamic study and do cystoscopy uh, before time of uh, remediation and the type of replantation. I want the, the type with least uh, manipulations or, or, uh, to, to not be confronted with the fibrosis that may be uh, uh, touched the urethra in the previous surgeries. Okay. Dr. Walid, if the child is completely asymptomatic, he is having vesicoeteric reflux. And he is you, asymptomatic, and the I bladder you, is waiting. I have many cases, and they never touch them. You, you I have will many never cases touch like that with, okay. unit, with reflux. Even yes. I have cases with solitary kidney, and most of these uh, patients uh, are solitary kidneys. Uh, and they have high-grade reflux, and doing well. And I have patients seven years, and 10, 10 years, and two years, and they are good on prophylactic antibiotic only. So if they are good on prophylactic antibiotics without pyelonephritis and kidney is, is going well, uh, ultrasound is okay like and the bladder is emptying very well, uh, yes. you don't resort to do anything. You just do follow-up in such uh, cases. If there is indications like any reflux indication, I will do search. Uh, Dr. Ehab Rafat is asking you, Dr. Walid, do you prefer common cheese uh, reimplantation unilateral or urethro urethrostomy? Please, Dr. Walid, say the indications for common cheese reimplantation and the indication for urethroutrostomy, please. Okay. Uh, indication for common cheese reimplantation if there is a reflux in one unit and the other unit is not dilated. Okay. We can do uh, common cheese reimplantation. But if there is any dilatation of one unit, I think uh, common cheese reimplantation will be difficult. And in such a case, I will do urethral urethrostomy. If there is reflux in both ureters, I will anastomose one to the other into side and do unilateral Lich Grégoire reimplantation. If both ureters are refluxing, if one is refluxing and the other is normal, I will ref anastomose the refluxing ureter into the, into the normal ureter. And just uh, like that, not nothing else. Uh, Dr. Ahmed Fahmi, the, the scenario of uh, uh, posterior cell valve and uh, secondary vesicoteric reflux uh, control the bladder and control the voiding. And in spite of that, the child is having uh, pyelonephritis. In spite of having a very good bladder and very good voiding, he is still having recurrent pyelo. Nephritis. This scenario is very rare, Dr. Very rare, yes. It's very, very rare. Usually, the bladder and the voiding are the main problems in children with posterior urethral valve. Uh, Dr. Yeah. Ahmad Sa'ar, uh, Dr. Walid from Zagazig is asking you, if you have one side grade 3 reflux and the other side is grade 5 uh, reflux, do you think in doing a deflux injection at one side, which is grade 3, and doing open reimplantation on the other side, uh, as an Ish Grégoire, for example, or you do um, uh, both reimplantation. What do you think? Uh, uh, Wada, it's very, it's, it's very clear that in the Gazik they are very rich and they are having deflux and the oh, Having so, many deflux. Yeah. They can help us. Uh, <laughs> Go ahead, Doctor Ali. You will do reimplantation, I'll or you can try. Once I will open the, operate the patient, and I will uh, finish this problem uh, once. I will do bilateral implantation. Uh, Dr. Walid, there is another question. Um, what is the age to stop chemoprophylaxis in case of non-symptomatic vasicoureteric reflux on follow-up? This is a debatable matter, Dr. Haysa. Sometimes, uh, at the age of five years, some authors prefer to finish the problem and do ureteric reimplantation. Sometimes, some authors uh, go with prophylaxis uh, for longer time, especially if it's asymptomatic and no problems and no deterioration and no infection. 
no uh, specific age to terminate uh, chemoprophylaxis. There is no solid data about this. Uh, usually, Dr. Walid, I my practice is to stop the antibiotic prophylaxis after the age of complete toilet training. This yes, is my five years. But uh, we have I'll... cases that try some six years and whatever and doing well. Uh, it is debatable. It's debatable. You can wait and you can surge, do surgery. Uh, Dr. Hisham Khotri, uh, any comment about adipocytes as anti reflux injection product? Adipocytes as anti reflux yes, yes. injection product. The figure product. rate is very high com in comparison to the flux, uh, and the low success rate makes it not popular, uh, popular to be used as a management for the flux. Yes. Um, uh, you answered all questions, Dr. Walid. Thank you again for the answering all the questions and for the very uh, uh, elaborative uh, presentation. Uh, if anyone now wants to discuss something with Dr. Walid face to face, he can unmute himself or just send me on uh, on the chat, and I can unmute him to discuss directly with Dr. Walid. Uh, Dr. Salah Nagla, please unmute Dr. Salah. We are always, Salah. we are always fond of your fond of your comments. Uh, I'm very happy for that. Uh, we all know that uh, the, the deflux injection in high-grade reflux, as you have uh, shown previously, uh, the results are very inferior. In grade 5, it's 20%, and in grade 4, it's less than 50%. Uh, but uh, please, um, let me share with you the experience of uh, Dr. Nicola Capuzza, one of the pioneers and one of the uh, good surgeon in deflux, and the man who um, devoted the WHO accreditation for deflux. Um, in special situation, uh, if a child is four or five months old with a repeated uncontrolled UTI, uh, uh, Nicola um, do injection, even if it's a uh, high grade reflux uh, in this situation only. Uh, and later on, after three months, he, 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 he repeats a stoscopy and do uh, 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 a pexestrogram again. And if there is any um, residual reflux and it's present in, in most of his cases, uh, he do injection again after three months. Uh, uh, and he has a good results. In grade four, he has more than 90% of the children did, need, uh, did not need an extra uh, operation like vesicostomy or reimplantation and in, 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 in grade four. And in grade five, 70% of, of this category of these, of these children uh, did need no uh, uh, extra operation, like uh, what I said, a vesicostomy or re-implantation. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Salah. Uh, Dr. Walid, uh, uh, you have... Horizon is not the standard of care uh, in such, such patients. This is a uh, uh, surgeon preference. And uh, I don't uh, to do how uh, to uh, comment on this. Unless there is a comparable data or, or controlled studies comparing this technique with other techniques. But I will not do that uh, bilateral. I, I know some surgeons and you know, try some doing the flux injection in bilateral grade five reflux and inject three ampoules in each side and uh, may again inject three ampoules in each side. We have not uh, uh, this. Uh, Materials. So in, in, your, in, in, uh, in our economic uh, conditions uh, and for yes. our setting, uh, yes. you are recommending doing the uh, deflux or endoscopic treatment for uh, up to grade three or maximum grade four vasicoteric reflux and the open reimplantation for grade four and grade five uh, vasicoteric reflux. Exactly. It sounds more logic in our uh, settings. Dr. Ahmad Sa. Uh, thanks, Dr. Walid, for this nice presentation. Uh, uh, my question about uh, in cases with uh, if, I, if you decided to reimplant in a child less than one year, and uh, if you are thinking about the rationale uh, why the reimplantation before the age of one year is not uh, recommended. 
do you re will you reimplant this tri this ureter intravesical or extravesical? Which is better in your opinion to relate? Because I think in my hand I will do it extra uh, vesical to not interrupt the bladder by modified Lich Grégoire. Uh, so I want to ask about what, what about your Alexander experience in this situation? Uh, Dr. Ahmed, uh, I will tell you that I am not eager to uh, to reimplant this boys in such age, but in selected situations, uh, increasing its obstruction, uh, deterioration of the renal function. Many of the cases I wait until uh, the age of one year. But if I obligated to do reimplantation before one year, I will do uh, Lich Grégoire reimplantation, extra cycle uh, reimplantation with uh, tailoring of the ureter. So you agree with me that you will be yes, that yes, it will be done extra yes. Okay. Yes, the yes. second question about the uh, the second question is about the cases with Hutch diverticulum. Yes. You will do intravesical or extra vesical? Extra vesical also and removal of the reticulum is edit my way uh, for implantation. Okay, I agree with you. Thanks, Dr. Thank Lee. Uh, any other question, please? Uh, I, I have a comment to Dr. Walid. Uh, indications for doing reimplantations in the first uh, year of life are very, 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 very limited uh, yes. indications, whether yes. obstructed mega ureter or vasicoeteric reflux. This yes. is a very important message. Most uh, of the cases, we are not Bison, doing reimplantation frequently. Yes. yes, most of the cases will resolve spontaneously. I I do this if I have a patient six months and I I am. Uh, I will do for him uh, urethrostomy or balloon dilatation. If in uh, if uh, if I am in a dilemma, I will do reimplantation. But if the case is straightforward, I will wait. Okay, Dr. Wait. So these are very, very, very selected cases. Very limited indications, and yes. and you should have very good experience in doing reimplantation. Otherwise, so I and think the diversion. Uh, otherwise, I think diversion until the age of one year or one and a half year is much better to do reimplantation and to injure the bladder and to injure the ureter if you are not uh, having a sufficient experience to do yes. that in the first yes. year of life. Uh, uh, to be a straightforward message. Yes. Uh, uh, my colleagues, uh, thank you very much. Uh, if any uh, of you have any questions, uh, more to Dr. Walid, please don't hesitate. Or any comment? Dr. Ahmed Hanno asking uh, our professor and father, Dr. Ahmed, in case of simultaneously primary flux and different uh, primary BGO, which you tackle first? Uh, of course, BGO uh, will be uh, tackled first uh, as you teach it us, Dr. Ahmed. يا ريت عبد الرحمن فين؟ احمد هنو انا عملت حراك ان ميوت اتفضل يا استاذ احمد. يس اتفضل يا سام تايمز اي ام شور اوف ذا دايجنوزيس اوف برايمري بي او جي او فروم ذا في سي او جي ذات از وين ذا بوست رويدنج فيلم ذا يوريتر امتيز بات ذا بيلبس داس نوت. يس. ذير ار تو سكولز اي دونت نو ويتش از بيتر. To do the proximal obstruction first by to by a pyeloplasty, or to do the anti reflux first, and then do the 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 pyeloplasty. Uh, I am not sure. So, what's your opinion, Dr. Ahmed? Uh, uh, Dr. Ahmed, can I comment, Dr. Ahmed? Yes, sure. لو حضرتك عندك ال ال ultrasound بتاع العيان واضح إنه هو بيلفي ureteric junction obstruction. Well, ureter is not too much dilated in the ultrasound or even not dilated at all. Uh, voiding cystiurethrogram is showing uh, low grade reflux, grade uh, three reflux. And in the post voiding film, uh, ureter is emptying very well, but the dye is retained inside the renal pelvis clearly. Clearly, this patient is a primary pelvic ureteric junction obstruction necessitating pyroplasty first. Okay, but in some other cases, the ureter is dilated with high grade reflux, and uh, in, in that scenario, you can do the reimplantation first, 
and wait for and follow up the upper tract. If the upper tract is progressively dilating, so you can think in doing a secondary uh, uh, pyroplasty in, in, in that scenario. Well, if, if the reflux is not dilating, then you can ignore it altogether. I mean, when there is yes. definite yes. Dilated, yes. dilated reflux and the definite PUGO. Yes. That's where, and, and now I have two answers, one from you, reflux <laughs> first, and one from Walid, the pyroplasty first. I am not sure which is. No, um, uh, I did pyroplasty first if uh, the main problem in the renal pelvis at the pelvic junction. But if you have high grade reflux, a dilating reflux with secondary PGO, you can do the reimplantation and wait for uh, the upper tract. If, if not dilating reflux, I wouldn't care about the reflux at all. Yes. Just yes. do the pyroplux. Yes. 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 The scenario I'm asking about is a dilating reflux and a definite pelvic junction. Anybody has an idea to treat the proximal first or the distal? I will treat reflux first and follow the upper tract. And why? And if the upper tract is improving, I'm not going to do anything. If the upper tract is dilating, I'm going to check my reimplantation. If it is okay, I'm going to check the bilvioretic junction. If it is the main problem, I will do pyroplasty. Okay. You can mute me now. No, I, I told you to try not. Can you smile now? But as I could press and Dr. Gamal Saeed uh, wants to add a comment. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Hassan, Dr. Reid, Shukran Gazan, and Muhammad Gil Shaykh Adir. If you have a case of uh, high inductor malformation with uh, unilateral reflux, what is the priority? To do the to be with the reflux or to repair for the high inductor malformation in a later period? In erectile malformation? Yes. High inductor yes. malformation? With uh, unilateral reflux. Uh, in in, uh, in two things. In the neonatal period, there is no indication to uh, manage uh, reflux, even in normal patients, uh, unless there is a continuous infection despite uh, prophylactic antibiotics, we can do some sort of diversion. But in such cases, as a pediatric urology, I don't touch uh, such uh, cases of uh, malformation, it's not our domain. Uh, as regards the reflux, I will uh, manage it uh, conservatively. For how long, Dr. Ali? Uh, 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 as long as the patient is asymptomatic and is going well with prophylactic antibiotic, I will not do uh, anything. Shukran, no. So, Dr. Gamal, again for uh, a comment. For the psychoteric reflux, if the kidney is stable and the child is not having the prior urinary tract infections and he is stable, we are not doing anything for reflux except to follow up. But if there is breakthrough infections or progression or affection of the uh, kidney function, we can discuss the uh, different uh, modalities for treatment of a psychoteric reflux. Okay, thank you, Dr. Thank you. Dr. Ashraf Sulaiman, unmute. Dr. Ashraf, Dr. Ashraf Saad, do you want to ask me? Yes, I want to ask you. Dr. Ashraf Saad, 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 الله يكرمك يا باشا هو الدكتور جمال بيسال على الحاله ده متابعها اصلا معاه يعني فانا قلت نفس اللي انتم قلتوه <تصفيق> بس النقطه بتاعت الريفلكس مع انا انا طبعا احنا حضرتك عارف ان احنا الام سي يو جي او البي سي يو جي انا بفضل ان احنا انا بعمله بنفسه لغايه دلوقتي يعني واي ريكومند اني بادي انه يعمله او يتواصل مع راديولوجيست بحيث يبقى في بروتوكول او في اندرستاندنج ايه اللي هو عايزه بالظبط لو الريفلكس اسوشيتيك يعني بالنسبه للهاي جريد ريفلكس انا بحكم على هل الدايريتين دي في البلبس ولا لا لو الدايريتين دي في البلبس انا اوفويدنج فيلمز انا هكونسيدر ده اوبستراكتد وهبتدي اشتغل على البي جي او فيرست لو الداي نوتريتين انا هعتبر ان ده سكندري ومش مش هيسبب مشكله وهشتغل على اللور تراك هعمل ري امبلانتيشن 
فده ده ده اللي انا ماشي عليه يعني انا بعمل ام سي جي وباصبر على البوست فويدنج واشوف الدايرتين دي في البلبس ولا لا اكوردنج تو ذس بحكم اذا كنت هعمل يعني ري امبلانتيشن فيرست لو ما انديكيتد او هعمل الفيرو بلاستي فيرست فدي نقطه دي يعني ده ده اللي انا بعمله يعني طبعا سوفن ان اي حد يعني يقبل ده او يمشي على على اذر سكول لكن انا بالنسبه لي بعمل الحالات كلها بنفسي وبمشي على البروتوكول كده اتفضل يا فندم معاك دكتور هيثم ايوه السلام عليكم كل سنه وحضراتكم طيبين وحضرتك طيب دكتور اسامه معاك دكتور وليد اتفضل حضرتك يا دكتور وليد انا يعني استمتعت ازاي حضرتك استمتعت بالمحاضره بتاعتك والحقيقه استفدت حاجات كتير قوي ما كنتش عارفها عرفتها فكتر خيرك وجزاك الله كل خير الفكره الفكره اللي عايز اقولها ان الحقيقه حالات اليورولوجيكال بروبلمز مع الانوركتال مالفورميشنز should be taken very seriously ولازم ندور على سبب للريفلوكس حتى لو احنا افترضنا ان العينين دولت they are primary flux we have to think about a secondary cause or bladder dysfunction and we have to address the bladder dysfunction in these patients it's not the problem of doing surgery or not but you have to address the bladder dysfunction as well زي بالظبط عالين بوسيوس الفالف If you have a reflux in a posterior valve, you address the bladder function or this function, and as well in the anorectal anomalies, you have to consider this, especially if you have a single kid. So it is not only uh, that you treating the refluxing uh, units, but you have to consider the problem of the bladder or the bladder dysfunction as a very important aspect in managing these patients. And even after correcting surgery, the anorectal anomaly correcting uh, corrective surgery, you may. Uh, have a more complication uh, 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 the, the problem will be more complicated because of the denervation that you are doing especially if you are uh, dealing with a high type of anorectal malformation during the discussions about the um, uh, correction of reflux below uh, one year of age Dr. Salah Naglam Uh, uh, can can he he considers the uh, injection 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 uh, therapy for uh, patients below one year of age? So had the short 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 كل ما البوسيبيليتي او ممكن تحتاج اكتر من مره. الحاجه الثانيه ان ساعات احنا لازم ناخد بالنا ان ساعات الريفلوكس انجكشن ان بلو 1 يير اوف ايج اوف استراتيجيك تايب اوف تريتمنت الانتي بايوتكس ريكوايرمنتس اللي العيان بياخدها ويتش از ا ايكونوميك بيردن سم تايمز بيشنت از نوت كومبلاين اند اي ام for the next. so sometimes the injection of deflux in below one year of age is a strategic way of management i'm not aiming at abolishing the reflux itself at all so even sometimes yes if i decrease the reflux from five to two or three this is an achievement this is maybe of value for the patients in terms of economy Antibiotics in the complete antibiotics to take. Uh, I, I would like as well to uh, mention the technique of the mini neocystostomy, where the Leach Grigoire principle is taken with a very uh, miniature or small sized incisions, muscle splitting incisions. And I think that's uh, all of us know uh, an important uh, um, uh, technique. In our hands, if we think that the deflux is more expensive or the deflux injection is more expensive, even in the low grade of in the low grade reflux, so we can adopt the many nephrostomy technique, where there it is a stentless operations and it's done as a day case surgery with a very a small uh, incision for uh, our small children. Thank you. I can comment. I'm sorry, Dr. Osama. He asked about these young children with reflux and the urinary malformations. 
uh, our protocol is uh, don't touch the patient unless there is a solid indication for intervention. So if the patient is uh, asymptomatic, if a bribe, uh, no deterioration of hydronephrosis, we will follow this patient with uh, ultrasound and uh, prophylactic antibiotics. If there is indication to do intervention, just uh, like uh, recurrent febrile UTI or hydronephrosis, increasing the hydronephrosis, we should do for this patient urodynamics cystoscopy before doing reimplantation to uh, exclude any causes of secondary uh, reflux for such patients. And urodynamic, we can do it uh, at any age. Dr. Haytham? أي يا فندم مين؟ محمد سعد معاك؟ اتفضل يا محمد. أنا عايز حضرتك كنت قلت لي قبل كده الجوريزم حضرتك ماشي عليه بيرسونال. فور تشوزنج ذا تايب اوف ري امبلانتيشن. ممكن حضرتك آه. استأذنك uh, تقوله لنا سيمبلي كده؟ اه بس ده مش ايفيدنس بيسد. ذيس از اي نو اي نو ماي بيرسونال اي نو ماي بيرسونال زي ما انا اتفقت مع حضرتك قبل كده ان الدسكشنز بتاعتنا والميتنج بتاعتنا هيبقى محتاجين فيها البراكتس بتاعنا. فبعد اذنك لو يعني اه يعني الايفنس بيز اوكي ان ان ذا يونيلاترال كيسز ان ذا يونيلاترال كيسز اوف رزايكو ريتيريك ريفلكس ان ذا يونيلاترال كيسز ام دوينج موستلي ليش جريجوار تكنيك ان ذا يونيلاترال كيسز ان ذا باي لاترال كيسز اوف رزايكو ريتيريك ريفلكس اي ام نوت دوينج ليش جريجوار تكنيك اذرز وود دو ات Okay, but I am not doing uh, bilateral leash Gregoire technique. I do bilateral Cohen re-implantation. And if the ureter is too dilated in high grade reflux grade four or grade five, uh, I do bilateral Cohen with tailoring uh, to establish a good uh, tunnel uh, length and uh, dimensions. In unilateral obstructed mega ureters, in unilateral obstructed mega ureters necessitating reimplantation i usually do reimplantation with source hitch uh, buritanolid bitter with source hitch i fix the bladder to the source muscle and the, the ureter is in a tunnel inside the bladder this is the technique uh, uh, dr alal ghanim is adopting in france and I, i am adopting since i returned back uh, others would do My colleagues like Dr. Walid, Dr. Fahmi, Dr. Muhammad Yusuf can do uh, in unilateral obstructed mega ureter, they are doing leash Gregoire uh, technique extra vasectomy. In bilateral, in bilateral obstructed mega ureter, we cannot do bilateral sausage. But still you can do bilateral leash Gregoire. I don't prefer it. I still do bilateral Cohen reimplantation. or bilateral bulletinal with better re-implantation. Is تمام. it clear, Dr. Mohammed? تمام, Dr. Hayson, تمام. I'm not sure, Dr. Rick, thank you. I think it's very nice, and we all have to pray, and we need to pray for all of us, and we will pray for all of us, inshallah. Dr. Hayson, Dr. Hayson? Hello, Dr. Hayson? ايوه محمد اتفضل اشكر احنا بنشكر دكتور وليد جدا بصراحه على تعبه معانا في المحاضره ديت وبنشكر حضرتك كتير بصراحه على المودريشن جود مودريشن